if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. And today is Send Friday. And so we will be talking with Wendy Stevens from, she's a guerrilla marketing consultant. She's actually my guerrilla marketing consultant. She's working with me on the podcast here. So I was lucky enough to rope her into one of these readings for me because I thought that would be way too much fun. And we are going to say again, way too much fun for you. <laughs> So welcome to the call, Wendy. And and we're going to be doing a spiritual evolution energy reading today, which we call our seer seer readings. If I'm sounding a little croupy, that's because I'm still getting over being sick. But this is still going to be awesome because good news is I don't need a brain to do this. (laughs) Because I'm not the one talking. It's spirit talking through me. And so I can be completely useless and spirit will still be brilliant. (laughs) So we love that. Just nice awesome. to be off the hook. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm ah, thrilled to be here. Super excited to have you. So the reason I'm not letting you talk too much is because normally I don't let people talk too much on these. Um, and, and of course, normally I don't know the person. So, you know, I'm kind of defeating the purpose with this one, but that's okay. We know each other in a business capacity. And so, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, I do obviously know some personal stuff about you, but there's sure, I'm sure that more things are going to come up than that in the read. So, so the the way this works is that I'm going to send a little bit of my energy out to you. And so I'm going to need you to give me permission to make a little Kelly sized hole in any shields you might have to let me come into your energy field so that I can read it. Uh, I'm going to start by looking at if I see anything coming up from the outside, I'll let you know I don't often. And then once I come into the aura, it'll tell you where you are right now. And then from there, we'll drop into each chakra starting from the seventh and working down to the first. And what I'm looking for is what are the blocks, what's in the way of your next stage of your evolution. So I need to give this disclaimer at the beginning of each one of these because my people love to judge themselves. And so what I'm going to say is if you are at the beginning of a level of work, you will have a lot of blocks. If you are at the end of a level of work, you will have very few blocks. So please do not take this as a universal report card on your life, but just an indication of where you are in this particular level of your work. Because with each new level that comes up, if you've got almost no blocks now, the next new level comes up, you'll have a ton of blocks. And that's just how the whole process works. So just keep that in mind as we go through the process. As we go through, some themes are going to become evident. Anywhere from one to three themes are usually evident for people. The blocks that I'm looking for, I have done over 3,000 of these energy reviews over the last 15 years. And so the blocks that I'm specifically looking for are the ones that showed up over and over and over and over again for people. And so everybody on a spiritual path has some of these. Nobody has all of them, but they all have some. And so I start off looking for those. And then I ask if there's anything specific to you that's unusual for that my guides will tell me. And I do that in each place. So uh, please ask questions as we go. Interrupt me because at the end of this, I'll remember maybe 15 to 20% of what I said because I'm channeling. My brain doesn't store memories the way it normally does. And I understand from you before we got on the call that you do know what the chakra system is. So I'm not going to explain every single one of those as we go through, but I will probably give you a little bit here and there. And then try to make sure I cover everything. It's early and I'm, we're still in your brain, not, not. I know. I know. (laughs) Oh, wait, you got your coffee. I get to too, right? Absolutely. So please make sure that you stay focused on this reading during this and don't like, get, get text messages and other things coming through because as an empath, because everybody I know is an empath, (laughs) um, as an empath, you're going to invite that person into your energy field. And suddenly I'll be reading them and you, which will be a really messed up read. So everything's shut off. Everything's shut off. Great. This is part of the standard spiel too. (laughs) Um, okay. Do you have any questions about the process before we get started? 
No, I trust you. And so I'm ready to flow. Awesome. Okay. So then do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? You do. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the first thing I see as I come into your energy field is this sense of feels like there were there was a lot of stuff circling you. And that was the first thing I saw it was like all this stuff circling you. And then it clears. It's like it, it's it's the space around you is opening up and all of that crap is like flowing away, which I know your circumstances. So I know that that's true. And so, yeah, so that's that's good because that's clearing and and I don't see anything holding on there. So that's super good. OK, and then let's let's come in. Okay, so I feel a lot of turmoil inside and it's it's there's anger, there's hurt, there's conf not confusion, but like discombobulation, which there's been a lot of that going on astrologically. And I know you've just gone through surgery, so that would account for a lot of that because, you know, who expects to end up with surgery from a catfish of all things? <laughs> Poisonous. Yeah. Like, hello, McFly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the primary. Let me see if I can clear through that and see what's underneath because this is all stuff that I already knew. Let me see. Okay. Underneath is this like massively grounded, super excited, ready and raring to go with all of that stuff on top of it right so there's this energy right now it's obviously it's temporary right but there is this mm, dissonance right now internally because you've got the the pain from the surgery and everything else on top of the i want to be doing this right and you know obviously temporary but that's that's what's standing in your energy field in this moment so Anything else in here I need to know about right now? You keep saying no and then saying wait. So give me a second. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Maybe I was just supposed to wait <clears throat> for things to line up. Sometimes when I, I carry the energy of change and transformation. And so sometimes when I say things, they ripple through your energy field. And I have to wait for everything to balance. So I don't know. But yeah. Okay. So let's come into the seventh chakra. All right. Okay. Energy flow in the seventh chakra is really good. However, the energy is only flowing to the heart and then coming back out instead of going through the full torso. So there is, it's like you're, you're coming down, going through the heart and then coming back up. So the, everything from the third chakra to the root chakra is not getting fueled by your crown chakra energy. So you're only partially energized. Mm -hmm. So the solution to this is a very easy one. It's called the tree meditation. I'll send you a copy when we're done <clears throat> for those who want to get a copy we will, there's one on YouTube now. And if it isn't on YouTube anymore, by the time you hear this, it's because it's in the community and you can go find it there. It'll be at spiritguideschool.com when that's up and running. So, okay. But the tree meditation will be a simple solution to that. So that's a, that's a quick fix. That's what I forgot to say. I know I was forgetting to say something in the beginning. It's a, if there's a quick fix, I'll give it to you in the moment. If not, we'll talk about it at the end. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Um, and so the, yeah, so that I would adjust. And then let me just check and see here. Okay, so you're really good at talking to your higher self, but you really just say talk to the hand to your guides. Because they're literally sitting on your crown chakra knocking to get in. And they're, it's going clunk, 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 like metal, right? It's like you're, you're like not letting their messages through. You're happy to let your higher self message through, but you're not letting that through. It feels like you have associated them with a, <clears throat> a parental authority figure 
that you didn't appreciate input from. And so therefore they're not getting through either. You may want to shift that perspective in your mind from parent to partner for your guides because they aren't parental figures. We often will treat them like that, where, especially if you came up through a Christian background or any, any Judeo-Christian background where you know God is parent and everybody else is child. And we, we get a little authority figure-ish with, with our guides and our, our guardian angels and things like that. And they are really not parental figures. They are p- partners. They're actually helping you because you're doing the hard job being on the planet, right? So making that shift in your head from parent to partner would be a huge shift for you in terms of getting more intuitive hits. Your higher self is doing its best, but you you, you could use some more. Okay. All right. Now let's check. Okay. So one of the things that I look for is a blocked masculine and masculine energy in this case isn't about male versus female. It's about the the traditional uh, structure and and form piece of the masculine, right? It's a you know focus and direction and whatever. And this feels it feels very hit or miss. So it's like when you're on, you're on. When you're not, you're really not. And so it's it's a back and forth on this one. And so let me just see what they're going to recommend for this. Oh, interesting. They're saying that supplementation with magnesium would be super helpful for this for you. That's the first time they've ever given me a supplement. Okay. (laughs) 3000 energy scans, never had a supplement. (laughs) I'm through, but they're saying supplement with magnesium. It will help. Obviously check that against any medications you're taking, but legal disclaimer. Oh, it's great for the heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's great for everything, but yeah, that, that's interesting. Anything else? Hold on. Let me see what they say. Nope. They're saying do that. That's going to be your best bet. Um, okay. Let me see what else is going on here. Oh, big time mind on overdrive. Okay. So mind on overdrive is when your brain just goes at you all the time. It's like, you've got a plan on a backup plan, a backup plan for your backup plan. You got 40 different things on your plate. And, da, 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 da. and, and the encouragement here, the invitation would be to, I don't want to say let go of the details because that's in direct opposition to what you need to do for the, the masculine energy. Right. But it is about trusting the process about relaxing and allowing it to flow because what happens is that that the mind on overdrive energy is about holding on to the control of everything right it's like ah, hold it with a death grip you inherently are an ebb and flow person and trying to do this with the energy is con is in conflict with your nature and so to embrace your nature is to learn to find ways to be not so so here's the thing is that it feels like you go into either death get grip control or abdication of control when you you delegate to somebody else and it's like nope that's yours now i'm done i'm off i'm moving on right and that is <clears throat> that is a uh, on off switch And what we're looking for is more of a flow state of being like, okay, I'm, I'm in the space. My brain is in a space where I can receive the details, fill me in, fill me, fill my cup up with information. Right. And I will disseminate my knowledge and then I will flow back out into my creative state because this is what it is for you. It's, it's, it's structure and then creativity, right? And then I'll flow back out into my creative state and be in that state until my energy shifts again. And so it's this, this flow back and forth rather than abdicate and control, right? It's a fill me up and I will, and then I'll use that energy to create and then I'll fill myself up again. Right. So it's, it's, that's sort of the energy that I want you to sort of feel into as we talk about this, because that is in alignment with your natural state of being. And uh, your wisdom, um, and there's a, 
So there's a state of being that being in this and some of the other stuff that's gone on in your life recently has put you into this real control space, right? And control space by definition says I'm not safe. Yeah. Okay. Anytime I'm in control, it's because I'm trying to control my safety, right? And so what I would really encourage for you would be to do some vagus nerve exercises to release the vagus nerve and to bring yourself out of the parasympathetic nervous system and into the sympathetic so that you can uh, get out of that fight, flight, or freeze state. Um, and because that's translating into your business and it's translating into your doingness, right? I need a tool for that. Yeah. So, uh, any Google search of a vagus nerve reset will give you the vagus nerve reset tool because there's lots of them out there and it's, it's a very simple process. And I would encourage you to do it like three or four times a day. It's generally just a process of turning your head in certain ways and doing things like that. <clears throat> the other thing I would recommend is a mindfulness practice, stillness practice. Now I, I'm not going to recommend meditation, sitting meditation for you. Cause I know that that's not going to really work great for you, but what I will recommend is what I do. Cause you and I are very like do it people, right? Which is before you get up in the morning, when your alarm goes off and you're just sitting there while you're still in your liminal space in between sleep and dreaming or you know, wakefulness and dreaming, I want you to just be still. I don't want you to turn your brain on and start thinking about things. I want you to let your brain float. Okay. And so imagine if your brain starts giving you things to think about, I want you to imagine that you're in a river and the thoughts are flowing through the river and you just sink to the bottom and watch them go by. Okay. You don't grab onto them and chew on them. You just watch them go by. And you just sit in the bottom of the river and you can breathe easily. You don't have to worry about drowning, right? It's fine. But you can just sit there and watch them float by. And then, you know, allow yourself to just be in this floating being with rather than doing state. Okay. okay? Because this being with state is a great tool for you to be able to practice because when challenging things come up, if you are practiced at being with rather than doing, then the challenging things that come up, you can be with them rather than be triggered by them so that you can see what's causing the trigger rather than being in the trigger or at least be able to do both at the same time, right? Because that's a, it's a step. Got it. Okay. So let me see anything else. Hold on. Okay. So the reason, the other reason you're not hearing your guides is because you are a natural channel. And what that means is that you have the ability to do basically what I'm doing right now, which is pulling the energy through and allowing, you know, your guides or entities to talk through you. People who are natural channels who have figured out how not to channel, because that's the very first thing you should learn if you're a natural channel is learn how not to channel because effectively channeling is, is uh, possession with permission. And so, you know, you need to know how to say no to the thing that's possessing you before you let it in. So you have done instinctively what, what a lot of people do, which is shut it off so that you can say no. And part of the, you know, that's part of the reason why your guides are blocked is because you've just shut that down entirely and not made space for them to come through. Um, the, the challenge that you're having right now is that it's also shunting some of the energy that's coming in from your crown chakra into your aura direct. And what that does is your aura has 88 eyes and there is a, a net that connects all of those eyes. And that net reflects your neural net. And so you, you never want to be shunting energy from the crown chakra over into the aura because that can fritz your, your actual brain, your neural net. Um, when I, I've done several readings on people with MS and they all have fritzed energetics. They all have fritzed uh, uh, auras. And so, you know, you want to be very careful around that. And so tree meditation again. Okay. The tree meditation will fix that. And then with your cap, which I don't 
I, I don't want to say that's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. The cap is good. It's keeping things out that you don't want in. And if you're not going to learn how to channel, you should definitely keep that going. But you should make it permeable to your guides and to all of the universal source energy so that you can avoid this bleed over. Okay. And, and how we do anything in magic is, ha, is by intention. So if you say, how do I do that? You just intend to do that. So you just close your eyes and you make it permeable. Okay. Got okay. It. Yeah. You created it. You can change it any way you want. So, okay. Everything in the seventh chakra done now, guys. Yes. Okay. Coming into the third eye and let's see here. Okay, so I'm checking the transmitter on your third eye. So there's two ways that we use our third eyes. There's the transmitter and then there's the receiver. And the transmitter is I go out to the Akashic, I grab what I need and I bring it back. The receiver is I am picking up on the energies in the world around me. It's sort of what most people think of as their intuition, right? <clears throat> and so your transmitter is nice and strong, but... When you're trying to bring the information back, it's like there are things swiping out to stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's, it's very interesting because normally what I see is people aren't willing to receive it, but you've actually got things between you and what you're bringing back that are whacking at them. Let me see what that's about. Hold on. <clears throat> is that you or is that something else? Oh, that's something else. That's not you. Let me see what that is. Hold on. Hmm. Oh, nice. That's a leftover curse from a past life. Wow. Do you have permission to clear that? Please. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let me test it again. Ah, regeneration. Thank you. I had a feeling that wasn't fixed. Hold on. <sighs> yeah, okay. Testing again. There we go. Yeah, whoever did it had built in an entity that was designed to recreate the, the curse every time it was cleared. So I just unwound that and released that entity so that it could go away. <clears throat> and it's been told not to come back. So what kind of curse? Some uh, long haired, long brown haired woman. Uh, she just didn't want you to be able to get the information. She she was, hold on. She was angry with you. She was jealous of you. She was spiteful towards you. She, she was your rival in another lifetime and you were wow. the star reader and wow. she did not like that. And so she cursed you and added this regeneration so that every time you had the curse removed, it would regenerate itself. Wow. Yeah, fun. Always good. Uh, That's better. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that should be, I'm just going to test it again, just to be safe. <laughs> you never know how many recursives they put in these things. All right. I'm just going to go a step further and wrap up her intention and banish that and then that way that can definitely be gone 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 because it still feels like there's some energy there so hmm. wow this thing is pernicious okay <clears throat> okay there we go Ah, now we're clear. Okay. Took a minute, but we got there. Okay. I had to wrap her intention up and then I had to mirror it back at her to get it to stop. So 
Wow. Normally don't do that because people only do these things because they're hurt and in pain and whatever. But if somebody won't let it go, then clearly they're asking to have it sent back to them. Get that next lesson. That'll be fine. But yeah, I got about 40 different ways to address these things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do the next step here. So let me just test one more time. Yeah, now we're good. Good, good, good. Okay. Now let's check the receiver. Receiver's good, golden, fabulous, fantastic, wonderful. Okay. Let's check creativity. Okay. So your creativity is supposed to happen in your second chakra. But when we do a lot of work and creative spaces in our heads, because we do them for business or marketing or whatever, like you do. We have a tendency to steal the creative energy from our second chakra and put it in our brains. And so you have this sort of push me, pull you happening with your creative center. And so the encouragement is to, um, again, it's the same energy as in the mind on overdrive. It's the try not to structure it so fast, right? I know your brain works a mile a minute, um, but there's a there's a creative space that you touch, but you could utilize more. You could could okay. They're they're giving me the 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 word muse. Do you use the word muse in your sort of feelings about how you create and stuff? Is that something relevant for you, or or is it just sometimes? Sometimes Actually, or recently. That's yeah. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, the they're what they're saying is use the muses more because the they will help you to take what you're doing to even the next level still. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> yeah, so that's sufficient. They say you get that. Okay, great. And so that's that's the piece there. And then let me look at hold on. Okay, so your trust in the universe slash trust in yourself is a bit challenged. You want to believe that the universe is taking care of you, but certain situations have, have blown up in your face and now you're going, well, do it. can I trust myself? Can I trust the universe? Can I, da, 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 da. So the key here is to shift what you have experienced from a, uh, I'm not, you know, I wasn't safe. I wasn't, you know, being taken care of. I wasn't whatever, whatever to here's what I learned from this situation. Right. And when you can take it out of an energy of victim space and into an energy of, of, I had this experience, this challenging experience so that I could learn X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. then it helps you to be able to trust yourself and trust the universe again, because it was for a purpose. Right. So, so the key at this point is to start taking the gifts out of the challenge so that you can take that and, oh, good. She's yawning. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So when we, when our brains are trying to take in new information, we will yawn to bring more oxygen to our brains to allow us to take it in. So same. that's actually a really good sign that you're yawning. So it's like, not even tired. Right. Yeah. That's your brain is trying to take in the information. So yeah, I'm getting all kinds of tingles on that, on that one. So the, the encouragement is to start to take the, the gifts out of the experience so that you can say, okay, this came to me for a reason. This, this had a purpose. And so that you can release the energy of victimization that came along with it, because you don't want to hold on to that because that will just generate more of that for you, right? Whatever we invest in energetically, emotionally is what we bring to us. So what you focus on expands, right? We say that at the end of every episode. So, <laughs> so that's the encouragement here is to, to start that process because you're at that stage now where that's possible. Okay, you're, you're out of the active energy of it. So it's, it's possible to start doing that. And doing that for you will start to make the, the shift in this dynamic between you and the universe and between you and yourself especially when we have challenging relationships with, that we opted into, we start to doubt ourselves. We start to say, well, can I trust my own sense of anything, right? And so what I would encourage you to do is to make a list of all the ways in which you've made great relationship decisions and say, this is one decision out of, you know, 
50,000 in my life. And, you know, everybody makes a mistake sometimes, right? And to be able to put it in that perspective and then also say, and maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe I needed to learn these things, right? Maybe this was exactly what I needed in order to take the next step in my life, right? And so all of that. Um, let me see here. Okay, so... <sighs> Here's, here's how this dynamic works, okay? So when you have a lack of trust, so we are the universe and the universe is us. So when we can't trust ourselves, we can't trust the universe. When we can't trust the universe, we can't trust ourselves, right? So if either end of that gets broken up, we, we both sides get damaged because it's a reflection as above, so below, right? <clears throat> and so the, the other piece of this puzzle is that when we have, when we are good people, when we are inherently good people and we truly care about other people and we can't trust ourselves, we will not give ourselves access to our full power. Because if we don't feel like we're trustworthy and we're good people, then we won't give ourselves the power because we don't want to take the chance of hurting people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you can't get that trust and self-trust in the universe, when you don't have that under in a healthy place, your power will inherently be diminished mm. because ethically you won't give yourself access to a lot of power when you're not trustworthy. Okay. And so, you know, this is an important thing for you to work out. And that to, is so interesting. Yeah. So, okay. So any questions about anything so far? So many, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really just like yielding and giving in to hear it. Okay. Take it in and just stay open so you can keep seeing. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see if there's anything else in the way of the power piece. Uh, yeah. You got cursed for it in, in another life. So there's a, there's a, a limiting factor there for you as well. It's like, Oh God, if I step fully into this, will I get hit again? Right. The, uh, Oh, was there Genghis Khan in my past? I mean, what the heck? <laughs> no, no, this was this was a girl fight, man. This was totally a girl fight. Um, oh. You know, very powerful witches. No, not witches. Healers, sort of. Oracles, oracles. Very powerful oracles in, in a school. Kind of like if you guys, if, I don't know if you watch the Wheel of Time, but like the Aes Sedai school, right? In the Wheel of Time, sort of similar similar but not the same dynamic but um <clears throat> but yeah it's a it was it was a like a sibling rivalry but you guys weren't siblings so <laughs> it was that uh, sort of energy and so yeah so there's some of that in there and that's just a matter of saying look you know i'm not in this kind of school and i'm not going to hit this thing again and this isn't what i do and so you know i can be allowed to have my power right you just, you got to take yourself to that place. Um, most people it's, oh, I got killed for my gifts. I've, I, you know, I've got cursed for my gifts as a new one too. So <laughs> the killed for your gifts one is easy. It's like, everybody's got to die somehow, right? <laughs> you, know, you don't get off the planet alive, right? Um, yeah. So I might as well die for a good cause sort of thing. Um, anyway, uh, anything else in here? No, that's everything in this chakra. Okay, let's come down in the fifth chakra, throat chakra. Give me a second. This one always comes through physically. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so this is a really solid self-expression energy. Usually I get like a straining forward or a pushing out or whatever, but your mouth is just open and the energy is just flowing out. And so I see zero block in self-expression. That's, this is, this is probably the healthiest self-expression energy I've ever seen from anybody. So, you know, it's just chill and flowing something to aspire to. So, okay. So let me see what else is going on in here. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. So you have a tendency to want to do people-pleasing communication, but you do not allow yourself to do it. 
Mm. So there's that because I, I literally feel into it and it's like, yes, this is active. And then it goes and then my mouth clamps shut. I was like, it's active, but I'm not doing it. Damn it. Right. <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> so it's still in there, which in, so for an it's not impacting your life because you're not allowing it out, but it is impacting your mindset. And so the people pleasing communication is a child response to feeling to to so when we're children, we are trapped in our parents' homes. We don't have any place we can go. And so we learn to people please to manipulate our parents into being more amenable to us. And so as adults, we maintain this tendency, thinking that it's a good coping mechanism, forgetting that we are adults and we can leave, right? And so the reminder to you anytime you're feeling the desire to people please, even though you're not letting yourself do it, um, anytime you feel the desire is to recognize that you're feeling unsafe mm. and to recognize that you are an adult and you can get up and leave. Okay. Those two things alone are usually sufficient to dissipate the desire to do people pleasing. Okay. And if they're not, then get up and leave. Right. So that's the, that's the deal. Okay. <clears throat> the no dependence in asking for permission. So you're good there. That's another child pattern of getting approval. Not hiding, not wanting to not be seen. So that's good. Anything else in here? You're looking good in this chakra. This one's rocking. Love okay. It. Let's come down into the heart. Okay. Big heart. Lots of, lots of love energy coming out into the world. Let's see how we're doing on the receiving side. Okay. Won't show me the receiving side until I address the betrayal side. Okay, so betrayal shows up as a dagger in the back of the heart. And so you and I both know what that is. <clears throat> um, again, this is a function of transitioning your, in, your energy around this from victim to what gift did I get. And keep in mind that betrayal energy is... It's, it's, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? Betrayal energy is the shame on me piece. I it thought is, it was the third time was shame on me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Three strikes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Two strikes and you're out, damn it. Two. <laughs> so, but the, the energy of betrayal here, when, it's, when it sticks with us. So the first time somebody betrays you, it's a surprise, right? The second time you're, you've betrayed yourself by refusing to believe who they were the first time, right? And so betrayal at its heart is a sense of someone told you who they were, you asked them to be somebody else, even if they said yes, and they wanted to be somebody else, it wasn't who they were, and they were inherently going to go back to being who they actually were. And so... In doing so, even in believing them when they said, yes, they could be somebody else, you have said to yourself, I'm going to buy into a delusion. And therefore, now I'm, I'm, I've betrayed myself as well as them betraying me, right? So there's a, a, a double-edged, there's a reason it's a dagger, because it's two edges, right? It's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a cut from them and a cut from you, Right. And so you have to come into a space, you have to clear the energy of the experience by taking the gifts from it, but you also have to come into a place of forgiveness for yourself. And I will tell you that forgiveness, the, my favorite definition of forgiveness is Carol Burnett's. Forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. Interesting. Okay. It's not about saying it was okay. It's about saying it was what it was. And no amount of wishing it was different is going to make it different, right? It, it, I can't change the past. I made the choice I did. And I, these are the gifts that I got out of that experience. And I'm going to choose not to do it again, right? Yeah. 
So all of this, and you know, I learned this, here's the red flags I identified, and now I know how not to do this again. Yeah. So it may be outside of this, but how do I get great clarity on the gifts? So the gifts that you, you can acquire from this is to say, now I know what the red flags look like. And you go through and you look at that, right? You were going to do a podcast about this, right? Everything you were going to teach somebody else from that podcast is a gift you got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So there you go. Okay. Let's see here. Any, okay. Now can I see the receiving side? Yes. Now I can see the receiving side. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So uh, remember how I said that the energy was being shunted around from the crown chakra into your aura. You're doing something similar with the heart chakra with receiving love. You're not letting any of it actually in. You're just allowing it to circle around your heart. Mm. So it's like you can feel that it's there, but you're not like letting it in. Mm. And the reason for that right now is because of that betrayal piece. Mm. Okay. So it's super important for you to address the betrayal piece so that you can let the love in because right now that's the reason you won't let it in is because you don't trust it. Mm. Okay. So you need to, you need to clear the betrayal piece and forgive yourself so that you can let it back in again. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, all of the ways in which you made good choices around relationships in the past would be a great way to do this work. Right. Because if you can, yeah. In the front row. Yeah. Um, so when I've done a clearing exercise, mm -hmm. write everything out, I mean, pages and pages and pages, shred it up, wooden bowl, burn it, take the ashes, wash, walk out in the ocean, like great intention. That might just have been a little teeny tiny step one, I guess. So yeah. Oftentimes we try to, to clear and release before we've processed because we want to throw it away rather than deal with it. So you need to sit with the self anger and the upset and the, I can't trust you. And what the hell did you do to me? And da, 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 da energy in order to allow yourself to feel all your feels before you let them go. Okay. It's important to do that because it, whether we feel like we've self abused or whether we feel like we've been abused by somebody else, we, it's a spiritual bypass to try and, and forgive and let go before you get upset. You have to get upset first. And the reason you have to get upset is because it tells your inner child, your subconscious mind that you didn't deserve it. Mm. If you don't do that, mm. then you will inherently assume that you did deserve it. Mm. Okay. And so that's the reason why we don't let ourselves let it go. Got it. So, you know, feel all the feels, be upset, cry, be angry at yourself, be angry at the other person, be, be up, you know, sad and hurt and victimized. Blah, blah, blah. Give yourself the pity party, you know, I mean, give it to you because you need it. Okay. Have your pity party, be in it for a, you know, give yourself a time limit, right? Somewhere between a day and a week max. Okay. To be in it and then be done with it. Okay. But you have to feel your feels. Okay. And so once you've done that, when you are sick and tired of doing it right now, now when I say between a day and a week, I mean, if you are full on pity partying 24 seven, okay. If you're, if you're going to do it here and there, it'll probably take a few months to get through it. But, but if you're full on pity partying, you know, I would say no more than a 24 hour pity party time, time frame. Okay. But the, uh, you know, I remember going through this with a partner. Say again. I think I'm going to distract myself from my life and go check into a place at the beach and just 24 hours. There you go. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I was always taught you don't do that. Yeah, I know. But yeah. you get you're it's in you. You got to let it out, right? So yeah. All right. So you you let it out. You let yourself have your feels. You move out the other side. And you're like, okay, 
Now you start to question your assumptions. Have you ever seen Byron Katie's The Work? Oh, yes. Okay. So for those of you listening, if you don't know what I'm talking about, all you got to do is just Google Byron, B-Y-R-O-N, Katie, K-A-T-I-E, The Work, and you will find the four questions that are relevant here. And at that point, when you've let all your feels out, then you're going to go and you're going to do the work around it. And you're going to take all the things that you're beating yourself up with and say, is this true? Can I absolutely know it's true? Right? All those pieces. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right. Is that sufficient for you? Yes. Okay, awesome. great. Okay. All right. Let's see if there's anything else in the heart chakra. There's grief. Yes, we've got grief in the heart chakra. Okay. Not surprising. Betrayal often comes with grief. So there is a sound healing, healing on clearing grief that I will send you when we're done with this. And again, if you guys want that, you can find it in the spiritguysschool.com thing. Yes. There's a string of those before the betrayal, really aware of, but so it, whatever it is you're recommending, I can go back through and sweep out. Okay. Yeah, it is cumulative. So the more you listen, the better it works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You do not want to listen to it while driving, though. So I know you like to do things while driving. Don't listen to this while driving. So, okay. And anything else in the chakra? No, good. Okay. Coming down into the third chakra. Okay. So the third chakra holds your identity, your inner child, and your, your power, and the stories you tell yourself to rob yourself of your power. That's, it's a big chakra. Okay. So let's see here. <clears throat> let's look at identity. Okay. So when I look at your identity, it is big and solid and it's like, it's, it, but so the first impression of it is, whoa, right? Just mm, big, solid. Mm. Well, um, I hope that was like Wonder Woman, Warrior. I hope that's. A yes. bit yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and, but it's a, but it's a big old robot being run by your inner child. Mm -hmm. So when I don't look at the man behind the curtain sort of thing, right? It's, it's, you know, you come around and there's this little girl in this, in these patent leather shoes and this pretty little pink floofy dress. And she's like pulling all the level levers and doing all the things. And she's tired, <laughs> and, but she's working furiously. Um, and that's, it's interesting. I haven't, uh, haven't seen anybody put these two together before that I recall. Uh, so let me just take a look and see her separately. Okay. Yeah, no, this is, this is her full-time job. I keep trying to see her at play or in her room or somewhere else. And she's, she tries to leave and then she comes back and she runs the robot again. So what this says to me is that you're like on the edge of burnout every three seconds. Mm. It's like, she's, she is, she's not meant to be driving the bus, right? Your inner child is not meant to be driving the bus. And she is not just driving the bus of your life. She is driving your entire beingness, right? <clears throat> and so the encouragement, the invitation here would be to step in as you, to, to, go and do a meditation with her. And in that meditation to look at her and praise her for all of her hard work, because she has really been working hard for you for years, decades. Um, and to just tell her how amazing she is and that she, she's done such a good job that she gets to go and play on the playground for the rest of her life. Right. And that, that you're going to take over and to have you as your adult self come in and instead of, you know, think of it this way, you know, this is a life-size version of you with these tiny little kid controls at the bottom. And I want you to just pull out the control panel and just step into the energy of the big you and just to embody it. Okay. Rather than have, right now it's a mask. Okay. Right now it's a, it's a, you know, it's like what you put out to the world. You can step into and embody this. You have been running this for so long. It really is who you are. And you just, you just need to own it. 
right? And so it's literally an, an imagining of a stepping into the energy and, and having that robot energy, just having that robot identity sink into your body and become one with you. And you can release the robot part, obviously, but, but to, to just integrate that so that it becomes you and she can be off duty. And then she's used to being on duty. So she's not going to know what to do. So you're going to have to spend time with her for, for the next several weeks after that. This is something you can do during that morning meditation. You okay. can sit and just visit with her every morning and say, what games are you going to play today? What art are you going to do today? Who are you going to go play with today? Right? How are you going to have fun today? So that she can go and do that. That's actually going to help a lot with your shift out of, you know, doing that vagus nerve reset because she is tense as hell from trying to run this all the time for you. And so as you release her to be able to go and be a child and do the things that child children do, um, that's going to help at a, a very subtle level for you to like allow things to just release. And so this is an integrative step with that other work. Okay. I can see the yawn coming. <laughs> no, is that not what I'm seeing? I am really so super present and rested and like, <laughs> I'm swallowing some of them, but, I, but keep going that you need the, you need the oxygen, right? Uh, it's the taking it in. So taking it in, this is, this is just you, your brain doing this. So, it. okay. So yeah. Okay. That's everything with that. Let me look at the stories. Okay. There's an, an, an inherent, not good enough story in here, which is not surprising because your inner child's been trying to run your whole freaking life. So she's never going to feel like she's good enough because she's right. not meant to do that. Right. And so that's, that's in there. Let me check and see what else is going on. Yeah, there's some too big, too much going on in here. Another no big surprise. So too big, too much is often we were rambunctious children and our parents are like, ah, oh, shut up. You're not meant to be seen or heard, right? You know, it's all of that. For this feels like it's also been perpetuated by the the, the thing that we were just looking at with the she was being a lot bigger than she was sort of energy. And so as you were stepping into that uh, in adolescence and uh, early adulthood, that that got reinforced as well. The, uh, what, you know, you can't do this. You're, you're not good enough, blah, 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 all of that. So <clears throat> let me see here. Uh, interestingly, no. Okay. I was expecting the martyr to show up, but it's not. So that's interesting. Good, but interesting. Let's see here. What else? Okay, so there's some not important energy going on in here. So the thing about not important energy is that we think that it's other people are treating us as not important, but in actuality, it's we are not treating ourselves as important. We are last on our own priority list. And therefore, we are unimportant in our own lives. And so when you when you want to address this, the very first thing you need to do is reverse your priority list and put yourself at the top. And I know we're trained, oh, we put our partners at the top. No, no, no. You have to be at the top. You give from your overflow, not from your emptiness. That's how everybody is happy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's a quick fix one. Anything else in here? What am I seeing? Hold on. So we haven't talked about this, but I feel like there's a history in your life of being gaslit. That there's, feels like there's one relationship in which you were gaslit. So gaslighting is, you know, your, your feelings are being denied, that you're being told you're crazy, that you're being told that that can't possibly be true and, you know, blah, blah, blah. That happened in one. Yeah, that's what I was feeling. I'm like, it feels like it's one relationship. And there's still that little bit of self-questioning that comes from that gaslighting experience that's still sitting in here. Sure. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. So you're, I, 
you're aware that um, I met someone that had been on the path of that very same person. Mm. As soon as I got that validation, that, and that was the first thing she said to me is you're not crazy. Right. So, so that's outside validation. How do I then make sure I've internalized it and released it? Yeah. So the, the, again, this is a function of coming back to the trust in yourself. It's that same piece of, let me list every good decision I've ever made. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and let me list all the good things about myself and let me list how many people have reinforced those. Right. Cause you borrow other people's belief until you can believe in yourself. Right. And then, you know, let me look at the one person who said this was all wrong. And what is the possibility that that one person was right and everybody else in my life, including me, was wrong? Right. Not much, right? Exactly. So you, you literally, you have to win the debate with yourself and be like, nope, this person was just an ass, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? No, that's everything. All right. Coming down into the second chakra. Second chakra is bright and shiny. That looks good. Checking. We already know about the creative center and how it's being shared with the sixth chakra, third eye piece. Anything else? Okay, so it feels like your passion has been somewhat dampened. Mm. Um, let me check and see what's going on with that. Okay, so there's some fear around it. There's some not okay about it. This feels like it's all wrapped up in that one person again. Okay. But interestingly, it's, it's not just in your sexual center. It's also your passion for life that has been impacted. There's a, a, a passion comes with abandon, right? And your abandon has been like mm. put on like lockdown because you don't trust it anymore. Right. Mm. And again, this is all part and parcel of that work that we've been talking about along the way. Okay. So as you, as release, as you release this other stuff, this will come and, and work with it. Okay. Yeah. So I've been aware of that and it's truly the first time in my life and I've done Phoenix from the ashes in different ways in my life. So this one was very, I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And then when I think about it, hmm, not so surprising but I just thought, if I give myself some time, reconnect to who I really am in the lifetime relationships, that just that it would start to heal. So what else can I do? No, no force. Yeah. Yeah. The other things that we've been talking about will all impact this. So all of the coming back into trust with yourself, that's the key factor is the trust with yourself piece, because you cannot give yourself the, the ability to live with abandon if you don't trust yourself in the universe, right? Right. Because the, you know, otherwise throwing your ass to the wind, which is what abandonment, you know, living right. with abandon is, it's not a safe thing to do if you don't trust that you'll be okay, right? right? The other thing, and this is interesting, I didn't understand this when I was younger, but the older I get, the more I understand this. There's a thing about the older we get, the more fragile our bodies become. Mm -hmm. And we have more of that fear of what happens if we live with abandon sort of thing. So there's an age related thing for this too, but the, you know, the, the key again to that is you got to die somehow, right? <laughs> you just got to lean into that and be like, eh, right. got to die somehow, eh, whatever. Right. And especially since you've just recently been injured by being on vacation, right. That, that will not, so this is, a, that is actually a reflection of this fear, right? So Tell when, more about that. okay. Remember that what we our belief structures create our reality. When you're living in a place where you fear living in abandon and you go and do something that is related to that, like I'm going to go and have this wonderful vacation, then your inner self, especially with as powerful as you are, will manifest things to keep you from that reality, right? And so, you know, for you, I know that this last vacation wasn't much of a vacation because you missed your flight and then you missed the thing and the connections and the bags and blah, 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 blah. It's like nobody wanted you to go on that boat, right? <laughs> like, 
like, like, no. And then you ended up with this surgery out of it. Right. And so, you know, there was this, this complete breakdown of the one thing that you were doing that was supposed to be this expression of abandonment. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can look at it from two different perspectives. One is all the breakdown in the, in the travel was trying to convince you not to go. So you wouldn't end up with your thumb being a problem. Right. Or you can look at it as the universe was reflecting your fear of operating with abandon and saying it's not safe and therefore created a scenario in which it was not safe. Right. So well, it doesn't really matter which one of those is true. Yeah. It's just addressing the abandoned thing will help in either circumstance, yes. right? Yes. <clears throat> because if you're not fighting against your own inner belief, then if it was your guides trying to tell you not to go on the trip, you would have been in alignment with that and been like, oh, I guess we're not supposed to go. Let's find something fun to do here, right? Whereas if it was just your, and, and, and if it was just everything being manifested by the fear of abandonment, none of it would have been manifested. Good question. Right? Yeah. It, it would me giving you any feedback help anyone in the future listening or watching this? Sure. Oh, what the hell just happened? I don't know what happened. I don't know either. My, my entire, <laughs> sorry, my entire screen just flipped. So wow. yeah. <laughs> I guess not. I think it was a reminder coming up for a for a, an appointment or something. I don't know, but yeah. Short, quick snippet synopsis. Yeah. When my partner's fifteen half year old cat that had nursed from looking like a little rat in hand, that animal uh, passed. Our first flight can canceled. Second flight canceled. And so I was able to like be with Sylvester and it was a surprise and he passed. So it was the way we were looking at it was, wow, God, the universe was so good that we got to be there. Yeah. Especially for my partner. Yeah. But then because it's a honeymoon, I, I want to support love care. And so, but yes, what happened happened. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating to me that when I, when I look at it and I trust, because I really do believe like stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, we weren't on the road when this, whatever, I, I just trust and know that that's true. How do I learn? So I know it starts with the pity party. Okay. But how do I learn to recognize when I believe it is God in the universe, but then I don't think I'm forcing but somehow we should have just not gone or whatever. How do I learn that? Big so question. it's, it's not a learning. Mm. It's a part of it is, is, so it's not learning that it's learning to talk to your guides because okay. your guides will tell you, right. And you'll lean into it. The, the challenge that we have is that our gut always knows, but our heads question. Mm. And, right? I'm a, and I'm a thinker. Right. And so when you get your head into the question, you're almost always going to be dragging it into a limiting belief. Got okay. It. And so <clears throat> our gut always knows. And so if our gut doesn't know, then it's because it's up in the air. There's not a clear path yet. And then we can consciously choose which timeline we want to engage. Okay. Right. Um, but the, so there's a, a way in which I think what happens when we get into these nightmare travel scenarios, like you were in, I think there's a way that we become attached to the outcome. Right. And when you're attached to the outcome of I'm going to get there, come hell or high water. Right. Uh, then you, you start to think, okay, wait, I'm attached. Let me sit back and ask, is this the right place to be? Mm. And then no matter where you are, if, if you're stuck in Vancouver or if you're, you know, if you're still at home and can't get a flight or whatever, you know, you, you just, the first thing you ask is, am I meant to be there? And just wait for the answer from your body, not from your head, not, not from it. your guides, from your gut. Right. Okay. And you know, if you're, if you're tense, then you're not meant to be there. If you're relaxed and open, 
if the, if the energy is expansive and then you're meant to be there. Right. So you just, you let your body give you the answer because your body knows. Okay. Okay. Wow. okay. Yeah. Good question. All right. Let me see what else is in here. <laughs> okay. I don't see any attachments. I see a chocolate addiction. A chocolate addiction? <laughs> Me? Is that not you? It's, it's my, my son's crazy about it. I don't even consume it. That's interesting. Isn't that crazy? Why am I seeing chocolate? I've never seen chocolate as an addiction before. Why am I seeing this? Hold on. Well, I've got other ones for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it, I think the reason that it came up is because of your son. I think it's, hold on. Let me look, let me look. Nope. Now it's closed. Hold on. Can you actively open again? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know where that came from. That's weird. Well, my, so my ex-husband had a total obsession. My son, it is his love language. He pursues it. It's, ganache this i mean all the specialty ones yeah no. that's that's so interesting i'm not sure where they gave that to me from because that's not i've ne i can't remember ever seeing a chocolate addiction from anybody before so so i was in the addiction did field did he, did he get it for me when he was born <laughs> i don't know i mean i i what I was looking for is in the addiction field, I was looking for anything there and what showed up was chocolate, which was weird. And so what that says to me, since you have two associations with chocolate addiction, both male in your life, that there's a, I don't think the chocolate was the important piece there. I think it was, there's masculine, hmm energy it's a hmm, hold on language translating spirit of language is not always the easiest thing hold on um <clears throat> there's a way in which you receive love from men in a way that is living in the addiction center, which is, so here's, here's the piece. Here's how addiction works. Addiction is an emptiness in our belief in ourself and that, that typically lives in either the heart or the third chakra, fourth, fourth or third chakra, right? But we shove it into the pleasure center in the second chakra, and then we try and fill it with pleasure seeking activities which of course don't work, which is what causes the addiction because we're trying to fill a hole in a chakra in which it doesn't exist. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a black hole of need. Okay. And so <clears throat> there's a way in which you engage with men in your life around love that is being treated like an addiction energy. So or I treat them or they treat no, you treat them like a chocolate addiction. Yeah. Like a, like any addiction. Okay. The reason chocolate came up is because it was bringing the men in your life into the, the dynamic. So, cause I wouldn't have looked for that. Um, so that this spirit does this, right. They, they're like, Oh, here, let me give you something you're expecting so that you will actually get what we're trying to get you to see. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but there's this, there's a, so, so the invitation would be to look at how you receive the love from the men in your life and what that actually fills for you. What, what, so we go looking for it in the pleasure center, but, but it's actually filling something in either our heart or our third chakra. So any of the blocks that we talked about in those chakras, right? If, and, and because then it's this it, because it's in the second chakra, it's in this black hole of meat. Does, okay, you're laughing. Do you have it? Oh, no, no. It was, it was yawning. Yawn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yawns. Yeah. No, I'm um, unclear. 
here. So I really want to get this. Yeah. Well, the good news is you'll have a recording so you can listen. And I do highly recommend that you listen to the recording over and over again, because people typically tell me on the eighth or 10th li- listen, that something they've never heard before is on the recording. That, how did you do that? And I'm like, I didn't, you just didn't listen to it. You, didn't, you couldn't take it in until then. So there is something specifically around male love, love from men that, that comes to you that is impacting this. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, they're telling me to just leave that with you and to let it be, and you will figure it'll come to you as you do the rest of this work. You're not quite ready to hear it now, but it'll be there soon. Um, Okay. Let's see anything else in this chakra. Yeah. Intimacy. Okay. So intimacy is being impacted by the exact same stuff that we've been talking about. Again, as you do this work, the intimacy is going to open more, but you're going to have to do some direct work on the intimacy piece. So intimacy is into me, you see, right? So if you are really trying to become intimate with someone, you have to let them see into you, not just your emotions and your headspace, but also your energy and your heart. Because I think you do well with the emotions and the headspace, but the energy and the heart are not as much. And that's mostly because you're not letting anything into your heart right now. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. Okay. When you're ready, this is going to be like the last piece of the puzzle once you've done all of the other work around letting go of all of this and getting the trust and blah, blah, blah. Once you've done all of that, then you may want to consider uh, taking your partner to some Tantra workshops Mm -hmm. um, because that will help you with the intimacy piece. Okay. And the energetics. It sounds like fun. Okay. (laughs) All right. Anything else in this chakra? No. Okay. Coming into the root chakra and the home stretch. Check the energy flow from the root. Okay, so good energy flow, but again, not working its way all the way through your body. It's coming in and going out at the root chakra. So tree meditation going to help with that. And so I, when I see a steel plate at the bottom of people's feet, what that means is that they've given permission to somebody else to pass judgment on their lives. And at any moment, they can just pull that steel plate out from under them and, and pull them out from, pull their feet out from under them and land them on their butt by disapproving. Now, what I see with you is that you had that and you punched through it and sort of a fuck you sort of thing. And you punch through it and you've grounded through it, but it's still there. You're just ignoring it. So the key in this scenario, and usually this is apparent, typically that, yeah. That again, a different way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. This is so. Or I did. So what this means is that you've given someone permission to pass judgment on your life. Mm. And in doing so, if they, if they disapprove, it just like pulls your feet out from under you, right? There's, there's like this, this whole thing. And most times I see this, it's usually apparent. In this case, it feels like the problem relationship we've been talking about. Okay. And so in your case, what you've done is you've punched through that steel plate because that steel plate is the representation of that agreement with that person, right? Typically what happens is that we live our lives by our own values and we judge them by our parents' values or the other person's values, whoever it is, right? And then we're always unhappy and we're always coming up wanting, right? And we're never good enough because we're, we're not doing, we're not living and judging by the same values. Now, the, this feels like it's the, the problem partner that is this thing. You have punched through the steel plate, the, you know, fuck you, I'm not living by your life, your, your rules anymore. But the right. plate is still there, mm. okay? You're still in the fuck you stage with the plate. Mm. So what you need to do is you need to revoke permission for that person. Instead of saying, I'm doing this in spite of you, which is punching through the plate, 
This is, you don't matter to me anymore. And I'm not giving you this, you you don't have permission to do this anymore. You, you are irrelevant, not I'm angry at you because the anger is the punching through, right? But the, you are irrelevant and I'm no longer letting your energy into my field, right? It's just like, you don't count anymore. Right. And that point of this is, this is the hardest part of manifestation is the letting go of anything being relevant about that person. If you're trying to remove someone from your life, they, they say the opposite of love is apathy, right? Mm-hmm. Not hate. Hate right. is still investing in the person. Sure. You need to create apathy around this person, right? Okay. And that will remove that steel plate. Pity party. Um, pity party. At least what did I learn? Mm-hmm. And then completely apathy. into apathy. Got yeah. it. Okay. All right. And then let me see here. And then tree meditation, obviously, to get the energy flowing properly. The let me see here. Okay, there's still fears around safety and security in here. Not surprising that that's up with the surgery you've just been through and and all of the other stuff that was going on. Long-term energy on this is ramping down. So that that is working its way down. The short term, obviously, you know, now that you've had your surgery and you're recovering, that's gonna that's gonna ramp down too. But right now everything's pretty high in here. Let me see if there's anything. The you know, the vagus nerve reset continuing to do that uh, on a regular basis is gonna help with this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. <sighs> Okay. So I went to look at the family and it says family's not relevant. And it it just pulled them out. I'm like, okay, not relevant. Okay. So we're going to skip that. So I feel like, I feel like you've become very insular in your life. Like, like your friends are sort of held at a distance at this point. And, and it it feels like there used to be a ton of people around you, right? Like you had this huge, vibrant social community and that now it's become more like just you and your partner. It's like this insular space. Um, Circled it in to only my lifers. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really small. Yeah. And so that feels like a fear response. Mm-hmm. It is so, about feeling safe for sure. Right. Yeah. So the the invitation, and I would not do this immediately. This would be at the end of everything else that you do, right? right. Um, but the invitation would be to reevaluate that when you finish this, uh, the rest of this process. When you've when you've done your vagus nerve reset, when you've done the finding your your trust in yourself and the universe again, when you've done all of that work, then I would suggest that you may want to consider opening up. Because this closing down to your just your inner circle is a reflection of that shutting down the abandoned piece too. And so, because you're passionate, you, you love people. You're passionate about being a social butterfly. It's part of your beingness, right? And um, there's a, those two are reflecting each other. And so, you know, right now you are where you need to be to do this work. But once you get through this work at the end of this particular layer, I would really encourage you to, you know, question whether you want to open up again, because that will, that will trigger the opening up of your social circle will help to trigger the opening of the abandoned energy. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? Let's look at the manifestation bubble. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So what's happening is your manifestation bubbles hitting your second chakra. And before it can get through the third, it's exploding out. So instead of coming up through all the chakras and being fully aligned with everything, it's exploding out. Now it's still manifesting, but it may come out sideways. Tell me more. 
So you're shoving a huge amount of energy through it. So it's it's manifesting, but it's not exactly the way you intend all the time. Mm. That that things are happening, but they're not happening at the level you'd like. They're happening, but they're not happening as quickly as you want. They're happening, but they're happening sort of half a turn off from what you were intending. You know, there's not quite what you were looking at. It's like, that's not exactly the way I was envisioning it. Right. And that's because it's not getting through all of the chakras to do that. You know, we need to be aligned in order for our manifestations to fully align. And so let me see what, what, what this is bouncing on. Okay. It's bouncing off the exhaustion of your inner child right now. Hold on. Yeah, no, it's just the, the exhaustion of your inner child right now. So as you, when you do that meditation to take on that, that should clear that. Let me see where that gets to there. Uh, okay, next piece is going to hit is it's going to shear off at the heart because love and money are conflated in your beingness. What does that mean? It means that someone in your life used money as a way of proving their love to you. That was their love language. And so you have put love and money together in your mindset, and therefore that bleeds over into your business. And therefore, if you're not accepting love, you'll have a hard time accepting money. So that's going to be, you need to work on the love piece to, or pick them apart. But I got to tell you, it's a lot harder to pick them apart than just to open your heart. <laughs> okay. So we have a tool for that. Well, we already talked about that, right? We already talked about how to let people in and how to do all that work around forgiving yourself and letting go of, you know, the hope of a better yesterday and all of that, right? How fascinating. Is two minutes helpful? Maybe sure. Two minutes, names change to protect the innocent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. So my first husband, father of my children, came from a family that owned one of the largest insurance companies in the country. And he drove a beat up VW bug and lived in a place with no furniture. And so didn't, didn't want me to know, right. It was really important to know that someone was marrying him because they loved him. I didn't even get to meet or see anything. The point is that was a hundred percent how he was loved. Mm. They given things withdrawn, you know, crazy. His trust he gets when he's 65, like it's, it's crazy. <laughs> But the point is, in the beginning, it just looks like Cinderella generosity until you figure out what it's really about. So it wasn't anything I grew up with, but I was in it for 10 years. Yeah. Golden handcuffs weren't going to look good on me. So I, I took nothing. Yeah. Zero. But that's fascinating that that association is there because it wasn't even in my consciousness that would be there because that's not how my family operated and it's not how I operate. Yeah. But that's interesting. Yeah. It's in there. It's a big insight. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So once you've opened the heart, yeah, that opens things up more in your business. And the reason that you can be as successful as you are now is because your family wasn't like that. But the next layer of success opens for you when you can open up this heart chakra. Got okay. It. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Once you deal with everything we've talked about, boom. Good Lord. Everything goes kaboom. Excitement, happy, joy, manifestation, like all to the next level sort of stuff. Amazing. Okay. All right. Let me see if there's anything else they have for you before we wrap up. they're saying that that they know it's been hard but they're so proud of you mm. they love you and they're so proud of you and they're they know there's okay so what they're saying is that you picked this path so that you could address all of these things all at once mm. so that you could be in that next space because otherwise it would have taken you longer than this lifetime to get through these lessons oh okay so they're they're saying you you know you're just like you normally are it's a you know <laughs> give it to me all at once so i can be done right 
that that was your choice, right? And so this was this was necessary in order for you to get to this next stage. And and they're like, you know, don't beat yourself up for it. It was a conscious choice before you came into this life. And it was a contract that you had with this person to do this so that you could get through these experiences um, and, and up level. OK, <clears throat> the. Anything else? There's just this huge amount of love coming through for you. Huge amount of love. And so, you know, they're saying, don't, don't, we've been here the whole time, even when you weren't listening. So, and we're not upset about it. We're, we've been loving you the whole time. Okay. So the minute you open, you know, all of this stuff is coming through to you. Okay. It's there in your aura regardless, but you know, it'll be more active when you open to it. So, okay. Let's let's talk about the themes and the things to work on. And you know, we've, we've covered a lot of it. You know, the basic themes are self-forgiveness and learning to trust yourself and moving into a space out of victim space and into claiming the gift space and all of that. Right. So we've we've kind of really talked a lot about that throughout the whole thing. Um, the. I would say the key for you on this is going to be to be in a lot of what you've been doing to try and clear this stuff has been sort of this active space of getting rid of. I want to be done. I want to be done. I want to be done. Okay. So the, the shift at this point is to a place of not trying to get rid of it so much as it is about trying to integrate it. Okay. So it's a beingness state, not a doingness state. Mm. Okay. To coming to a place of peace inside of yourself. That's your goal is peace inside of yourself. And you to be at peace is not a place to go. It is a letting go of not peace. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yes. Okay. That's what they wanted you to know. Any wow. questions? I'll listen to it a lot. <laughs> I got pity party. I got, uh, I no, I got a lot. And it, it, it is very interesting because I was raised and believe, don't believe in victimhood at all, but here the process I need to go through and go and address that in the pity party piece. Yeah, because when you're taught to like pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get on, yeah, I see where the healing really will start by just diving down deep, deep, hard, probably not long. Yeah. Okay, so how do you feel? I feel great. I feel open. I feel light. I feel great. Was it helpful? Helpful. Helpful on on multiple levels. The chocolate one I got to figure out. but everything else just like nail on the head nail on the head nail on the head and yeah the love money piece was so not a part of my experience but i did observe it yeah and it had an impact i didn't even didn't even realize it yeah well and the reason that it's between you and the next level they just gave me this the reason it's between you and the next level of wealth for you is because it puts you up at that level that they were at that they were using manipulation with money to do and so there's a, a connection for you between that mindset that they had and that level of wealth and so the you don't want to become that right and so that's the piece to pick apart and to be like right. you know money makes you more of who you already are and not money makes you that person right right, yeah. right. i know that yeah. yeah interesting that was great yeah cool awesome all right so wow, wow. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all we have time for this week. And so we will, this is Friday. So we will see you on Monday for our Monday, for our Mystic Monday episodes. Don't forget that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We will see you next time.
So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm